Everyone loves to soak in their hot tub, especially after a long, hard day. But sometimes we get a little heavy handed when we're adding the chlorine or bromine or shock, or maybe a big clump falls out. Sometimes I get clumps inside of my containers and you end up with way too much. And you're not sure, is it okay to go in a hot tub where the chlorine or bromine levels are too high? That's what we're talking about today in this video. The short answer is no. It's never safe to go in a hot tub where the chlorine or bromine levels are way above normal. Typically, your chlorine levels are going to max out at about three parts per million, whereas bromine can go up to six parts per million. That's when you dip your test strip in, but most of the time you're just going to go off of the colors on the strip that you use. And every different kind of manufacturer that manufactures test strips have different kind of color codes and readings. So I don't want to generalize there, but just know that if you're using chlorine, you don't want to go in a hot tub if the levels are above three parts per million, or if you're using bromine you don't want to get in if the levels are above six parts per million. So what happens if you do get in a hot tub and the chlorine levels are too high? Maybe you didn't check it before you got in. Well, on a minor level, that can lead to kind of red, itchy eyes, just like when you go to a public swimming pool that has loads of chlorine in it. Red, itchy eyes, maybe some red blotches on your skin or just general skin irritation. However, there's a real danger if the levels are over five parts per million if you're using chlorine. And let's get into that now. So, if the levels are above five parts per million, that can actually lead to respiratory issues, difficulty breathing, nausea, vomiting, things like that. That's really bad, obviously. So you wanna make absolutely sure that you don't go in a hot tub where the levels are over five parts per million. But beyond the health issues for you and the other people soaking in your hot tub, high chlorine levels can actually be really damaging to the hot tub itself. What do I mean by that? Well, over time, if you consistently have high chlorine levels, it can damage the, the acrylic shell of your hot tub. It can also damage things like the pillows that you rest your head on. Surfaces can degrade over time. Your filter will have its lifespan shortened significantly because it's gonna break down. It's made of paper, really. Plastic housing with paper pleats. And that can break down over time much faster than it would have otherwise if your chlorine levels are way too high. The good news is it's not really that hard to fix a problem where you've accidentally increased the chlorine levels beyond what they should be. The first step is just to take the cover off and let the sunlight do its job. Sunlight destroys chlorine. It destroys it faster than it does bromine, but sunlight will still eventually remove all of it from your water. That's why we keep the hot tub covered most of the time when we're not using it. Also, turn on every jet and water feature that you have. It's gonna get that water circulating. It's gonna get the chlorine evaporating into the air. Those things will get the chlorine levels down faster than just doing nothing. The next thing you could do is drain off a little bit of the water in your hot tub and then top it off with some fresh hose water. But I would only do that if the chlorine levels are extremely high, in which case it could take days before they come back down to a usable level. So today we're talking about what to do if the chlorine levels in your hot tub are accidentally too high. That could be from adding chlorine or bromine as your sanitizer or chlorine or even maybe non-chlorine shock. All of those things can affect those levels and if they're way too high you don't want to be soaking in there and you don't want to leave it that way for too long because it can damage your hot tub as well. So that's what we're getting into today. So next, I want to mention how long you need to wait to get into a hot tub that you've just treated with chlorine or with bromine. And again, in terms of chlorine, I'm talking about sanitizer or shock, either way. Normally with bromine, you can get into your hot tub a little bit faster, maybe 15 or 20 minutes after you've added it. Always check it with a test strip before you get in though, just to make sure that the levels are aren't too high. With chlorine, there are a few different kinds of chlorine available and they work in different ways. I'm gonna bullet point some of the details of that 
on the screen here so you can kind of follow along. There are some that are so strong though, they have to be pre-mixed in a five gallon bucket with water and then added to the hot tub. And if you're using that kind, you're gonna wanna wait at least an hour before you get in. You also never wanna add that kind directly to the water because it can really damage the shell and the equipment, it's that strong. The kind that I prefer when I'm using chlorine is called dichlor. Look for that on the label. There'll be a fancier name that I'll show on the screen, but dichlor is the nuts and bolts of it. That can usually be added directly to the water, and you can usually get in your hot tub within 20 or 30 minutes of adding that kind. Earlier in the video, I alluded to some of the symptoms of what's called chlorine poisoning. The nausea, the vomiting, the lightheadedness, and some of those symptoms. That's when you've soaked in water that's extremely high in chlorine, well above five parts per million. And you obviously want to take that very seriously if you're seeing those kinds of symptoms. I will say they do typically go away within 24 hours, but when in doubt, seek medical attention because you always want to be safe rather than sorry. Lastly, I want to give a plug for the chemicals that I like to use in my hot tub because I know the world of hot tub chemicals can be confusing. I'm going to link down below to one of my other videos that walks you through all of the chemicals that I use. You'll also see a card for that at the end of this video. But in terms of sanitizer and oxidizer, also known as shock, I prefer bromine as my sanitizer. Why do I prefer bromine? Because unlike chlorine, it can hold up to the hot water of a hot tub. Chlorine breaks down very quickly in hot water and it goes away faster, meaning you have to add more of it. It is slightly cheaper, but any cost savings you might have are lost because of the frequency with which you're adding it because it can't take the hot water. So I like bromine for my sanitizer. Specifically, I like this one from Leisure Time called Reserve. It's designed to work with a non-chlorine shock, but I actually do like a chlorine shock to go with my bromine sanitizer. And it's totally okay to use bromine and chlorine together in that way. For my shock, I do like a chlorine shock. I like this one from Spa Guard called Enhanced Shock. And again, this is not one of those that you have to pre-mix because it's so strong. I can add this directly to my hot tub. But I love the way that those two work together to get me crystal clear water that's safe to soak in. And I'm gonna link to both of those products in the description below that you can buy on Amazon quickly and easily. Once again, everyone, my name is Jeff Campbell. This is my channel, Hot Tub Owner HQ. I also have my website, hottubownerhq.com. I'd love it if you joined me on this journey by giving me a thumbs up, smashing that subscribe button and the bell notification button. That way you get notified of future videos just like this one. If you have something you'd like to see in a future video or a comment or even a criticism, leave me that in the comment section down below and I will see you in the next video.